All right, uh, my name is George. Uh, I'm a senior studying mechanical engineering, and I'll be making a series of videos for you guys going over the topics of uh, energy and thermodynamics. And we actually just released a video on this channel going uh, over the basic laws of thermodynamics, and I'll be linking to that video in the description just in case you haven't seen it. And what I'll be doing in this video is just going a bit more in depth into those laws so you guys can get a better conceptual understanding of what's going on. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna start with uh, the zeroth zeroth law of thermodynamics thermodynamics and what the zeroth law is saying is actually pretty simple so I have body A right here body A body A and I have a body B over here body B and body A and body B are at the same temperature and I have body C and body B and body C are at the same temperature, then we can conclude that body A and body C are in thermal equilibrium, which is just a fancy way of saying they have the same temperature. Okay, now why does that matter? Well, this allows us for the use of things like thermometers. So let's say I'm running an experiment. Let's say I'm running an experiment and um, let's say I want to test whether the viscosity of a substance has any effect at all on how fast that substance will cool down. So in this case, I would guess I would get some containers. Let's draw some containers here. So let's draw, let's draw four of them. One, two, three, and four. So I have four containers. And I would put four different things of four different viscosities in here. So let's put uh, let's put water. Let's put water in one of these. So let's say this one has water. And uh, let's put let's put honey on the next one. So that's has a different viscosity. So let's put honey in this one. Uh, let's go with uh, let's go with milk. So this one can have some milk. And uh, let's go with uh, let's go with blood. Blood sounds good. All right, so let's go with blood on this one. Blood. Okay, so this one seems pretty straightforward. I would get these four different things hot, and then I would get a stopwatch or something and see how long it takes for them to cool down, and then I would see if there's a difference. Nothing too complicated here. So I would put these four things in a microwave, and then I would just begin the experiment. But before I can start, I have to make sure that all four are at the same temperature, or else this wouldn't be a fair experiment. The whole point of the scientific method is that you keep everything constant, and then you change only one thing, and then you see if that one thing has an effect. So in this case, we're changing viscosity, and we're seeing if that has an effect on how fast things take to cool down. So let's say I don't have a thermometer in the house. Then what do I do? And this is the exact same problem that people were running into hundreds of years ago. They wanted to run experiments dealing with thermodynamics, but as you can see, in many cases, you can't even get anywhere without the ability to tell if two bodies have the same temperature or not. And this is why the zeroth law exists. Because the water and the honey aren't going to tell me how hot or cold they are. But if I create a third device, and let's call this device a thermometer, and that would be my body C in this case, that does tell me how hot or cold it is, then I could use that third body to tell if my body A and my body B are in thermal equilibrium, or that they have the same temperature. So for example, I would put my thermometer and I put it in the water, and I wait until the water and the thermometer are at thermal equilibrium, and let's say it gives me a number like 150, 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I take it out and I take that same thermometer and I put it in the honey, wait a little bit until the, the thermometer and the honey are at thermal equilibrium, and it also says 150, then by the zero flaw of thermodynamics, I know that my body A and my body B are in thermal equilibrium, and I would do that for all four of these, and if they all say 150, then I know by the zero flaw that all four of them have the same temperature, and now I can begin my experiment. And that's pretty much it. The zero flaw it just has to do with thermometers. That, uh, like when I was when I was taking notes uh, for my class, for the zero flaw, the only thing I wrote down was thermometer. 
because that's all it's really saying that you could use a device like a thermometer to tell if two things are in thermal equilibrium and and it's important to understand that this is fundamental to the study of thermodynamics because like i was saying earlier you can't even get started if you can't tell if two things are in thermal equilibrium or not in most cases so this is this is fundamental to studying thermodynamics and they thought this was important enough to make it its own law the only thing is they had already made laws one two and three by the time they realized this and since they realized they had to go first, they called it the zeroth law. So that's why it has that name in case you didn't know. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this helped clarify some of this stuff for you and I'll see you guys in the next one.